Hello, I'm Dr. Fritz Sutter. Let's discuss the top 10 foods that can be associated with and promote inflammation. Number one is dairy. In nature, milk is food for the very young, not adults. And cow's milk contains growth factors that are intended to grow baby cows, not humans. With the exception of some population in Northern Europe and a few African tribes, most adults do not digest dairy well. Regular consumption of dairy can promote irritable bowel syndrome, exacerbation of asthma, other respiratory and sinus disorders, some skin disorders, and even been linked to type 1 diabetes in children. Skim milk has relatively higher sugar concentration without the fat to slow the absorption, so this isn't a better form of cow's milk. Number two, gluten. The new syndrome has been identified called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. It used to be celiac disease, and now it's just people who are intolerant of glutens but not have full-blown celiac disease. It's beginning to be studied now, and an increasing number of people worldwide are reporting sensitivity to dietary gluten, which can exacerbate a variety of inflammatory dis disorders from irritable bowel syndrome, autoimmune disorders, weight gain, and pain. Take care to avoid high sugar content of gluten-free products. Number three, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, or sweetened beverages. They are known to increase the secretion of insulin from the pancreas, which leads to an increase in belly fat thereby producing inflammatory molecules, the big word for that is cytokines. Also, a link has been recently established between sugar intake, high blood pressure, as well as tri triglycerides, which is one of the uh, factors in your cholesterol profile. Number four, trans fats. Most of these have been excluded, but they include vegetable oil with the word hydrogenated in it, plus highly refined oils such as corn, soy, safflower, and sunflower. These are also very high in omega-6 fatty acids, too much of which can contribute to inflammation as well. These fats damage the inner lining of blood vessels, called the endothelium, which can contribute to cardiovascular disease. Five, animal fats. These are high in substances called arachidonic acid, which can trigger inflammation when eaten in significant amounts. Egg yolks are high in arachidonic acid, which is why it's best to select omega-3 eggs, which are actually anti-inflammatory. So look for the omega-3 labeling on the packaging. Number six, processed packaged foods and refined flours. These are the troublemakers. Refined or enriched flours, when you read the label, have been stripped of the bran which provides essential fiber as well as many essential nutrients, hence the name enriched. Processed and packaged foods almost always have undesirable additives, often to increase the shelf life of the product, along with sugar and sodium to promote overconsumption. These foods are very rapidly digested, which results in a rapid rise in blood sugar and these foods are calorie dense but nutritionally poor. Number seven, alcohol. Yes, alcohol, when consumed in excess, that is more than two drinks a day for men or more than one drink per day for women. Alcohol promotes inflammation of the liver, pancreas, and fat tissue. It's a simple sugar, alcohol is, that is rapidly absorbed, toxic to nerve tissues, and needs, detoxified, needs to be detoxified by the liver to be eliminated. So once a pickle, never a cucumber. Number eight, monosodium glutamate. Consumption can lead to fatty liver disease and other inflammatory condition, worsening of symptoms of fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, and has been linked to obesity, headaches, and swelling in the extremities. Number nine, artificial sweeteners. Although largely anecdotal at this time, the body of evidence supporting the toxicity of artificial sweeteners is growing rapidly. Sucralose has been linked to inflammatory bowel disease, and the consumption of artificially sweetened beverages has been shown to actually stimulate appetite leading to weight gain and its associated inflammatory diseases. Who knew? Number 10, advanced glycation end products, or AGES, A-G-E-S. Compounds of uh, this form are found mostly in proteins that have been cooked at high temperatures in dry heat, for example, grilling or frying, as opposed to moist cooking methods. These have been linked to diabetes, cardiovascular disease, can worsen osteoporosis, and are especially dangerous for people with diabetes and kidney disease. Moist cooking methods, such as poaching, steaming, stewing, and boiling, or use of an acidic marinade for about an hour before cooking helps to minimize the form of ages, which do promote aging uh, when you're cooking meat. Thanks for listening.